This show is sponsored by Wine Access. Go to wineaccess.com slash normal. Join my wine club. Four shipments a year, $150 each for six bottles. I'll pick out the wines for you. You drink them and enjoy them. Comes with videos, a note from me with a reason why I picked the wines. Join today. Listen in the middle of the show for more details. This week, I have Robin Rigby Fisher with me, who is going to tell us all about wine storage. We give you some really great and useful tips. Robin is a loyal patron and class taker. And when I have the patrons co-hosting, I always like to make sure to do patron shout outs. If you're interested in joining the community so you can do things like this, plus go on trips to Italy with me and join the best community in wine, you can go to patreon.com slash wine for normal people, P-A-T-R-E com slash wine for normal people and join this amazing community. And now let me give some shout outs to people who have joined recently. Eli S, Susie S, Vanessa, Janice, Misa, Lucretia R, Tamara P, Gavin F, Martha, Edward R, Nicole, Chloe S, Jean V, Christopher P, Lita B, Julie K, Melly P, Ilari L, C Y, Till S, Brian K, Jessica F, David G, Angela, Heather M, David J, and Benjamin C. Thank you all for joining the community. So without further ado, let me get to this fantastic podcast with Robin Rigby Fisher. I am so thrilled. I have with me patron Robin Rigby Fisher, who owns a kitchen design firm in Portland, Oregon, and she has been creating award-winning kitchen and bath designs for over 28 years. She is a certified master kitchen and bath designer and certified aging in place specialist, and Robin creates design that not only fits the way you live, but how you will live tomorrow, which is so important for this topic, which is how to deal with wine storage. So we are going to talk to her about wine storage today. She has so many ideas. Robin, thank you so much for coming and for representing Robin Rigby Fisher Design. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I'm really excited to be here. And this is such a fun topic to talk about. So thank you. I think I told you this. It's probably the most asked question on Patreon. The thing that people ask me most is, I have this wine storage problem. I don't know what to do. You and I tried to formulate ideas about all the possible questions that people could have. And I'm sure that we missed a few, but I think we did a pretty good job. Oh, absolutely. So let's say I am thinking about a storage space for my wine. Where do I start? What's the top consideration? Definitely budget. And that is something you have to be honest about. And whatever number you have in your head, Nowadays, with the price of things, I would always double that number. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Everything is so much more expensive today. It's crazy. And just to give you kind of an idea of how numbers have gone up in construction, prices have increased about 35 to 40% since the beginning of COVID. What? Actually, yeah. I believe that because I tried to get a piece of glass for a door and it took six months and cost double oh, yeah. the amount that they quoted. So that makes sense. Absolutely. It totally makes sense. And it has to do with every time there's a natural disaster, construction materials go up. So just be aware of that. So always plan double the amount. But then how much wine do you see yourself purchasing now, having in the future? And how much do you want to store long term? Okay, mm. so... You really need to think about those because it's really kind of three different numbers. And then the, where in your home can we realistically put this? Does your wine need to be on display? I do more high-end kitchen and bath designing, and that does not mean that I don't do lower-end kitchen and bath designing, but my clientele is higher-end, and many of them wanted a wine refrigeration storage unit that's within the kitchen budget numbers are higher. And we'll get into refrigeration a little bit. But in reality, so when I did my home, I found a space under my closet. It's not pretty. I'm not inviting anybody into my wine cellar. I have to get on my hands and knees and I get in there <laughs> and I get my wine and I can store, I have a racking system for 56 bottles, but then on the floor, like right now I had three wine deliveries. So now I have boxes on the floor, right? right. And I also don't long-term store. I probably have like six bottles that are long-term storing. And then everything is 
wine to drink. You know, I buy it, I drink it, I buy it, I drink it. My storage facility goes up and down and up and down. I hate it when there's empty holes in my, that's yes, what I, I get we stressed. All, yes, I know. I think we all have that. It's like, why isn't there anything in there? It needs to I be filled. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's when I get stressed. It's like, oh, I need to go get wine. So it's being realistic with your numbers. How much do you want to store? And then where can we put it realistically? And then we also need to think about, and I know we're going to talk more about this later, but temperature controlling. Oh, so for huge. Oh, it's a huge issue, right? Yeah. Even when you're buying $20 bottle of, I mean, I think my most expensive bottle I own is $150 and mm -hmm. I might have three of those. I mean, we're not talking high-end wine, right? That's I pretty mean, high-end. That is pretty yeah, high-end. Yeah. Wait, can I also just raise this point, which is uh -huh. very interesting. When you're talking about planning and how many bottles you'll have today and tomorrow and in the future, I also would like to raise the point that especially if you're somebody who right now has a giant collection and you don't want to hold as many bottles, you also have to plan for if you are collecting or holding fewer bottles in the future. Absolutely. So yeah. I think that that's something people also don't think about because as you were saying about the empty spaces, I was thinking to myself, there are also people for various reasons. So some people have changed their habits in drinking and they would rather drink more everyday wines. I did a cellar project for this guy and he said, we really don't want to have all these high-end wines because it's a lot of pressure feeling like we can't drink them. So you also have to plan for that. And then there's some people who are getting older and they don't want to have as many wines. And there's many different reasons, but also think about if your drinking habits have changed and you're not a collector per se anymore, how are you going to drink down that stock and then plan for fewer bottles too? right? Well, and that's kind of how your racking system, right? Does everything have to be individual bottles where you can display them? Or I just saw something on some website of these really cool drawers, right? Where you could stack wine in drawers. So that can easily become linen storage. I mean, a drawer can be anything. Yeah. So it's really about what is your ultimate goal? These beautiful wine cellars, you know, where you go in, I mean, realistically, I'm not drinking wine in a dark basement. I mean, even when you're having a dinner, you're going to get out two or three bottles and maybe you'll go and get another bottle or two at the end of the evening. You shop for it. You go pick it out. You bring it in. It doesn't have to be right there in the open. And are you realistically going to take people down into your cellars? I mean, if you came to my house, Elizabeth, you'd be on your hands and knees crawling in my base, in my closet. Okay. <laughs> That's, that would be one thing, but most people don't care. It's like, I don't know enough about wine. Just get me something to drink. I come over to your house, Robin, your wine is great. Pour something. So does it have to be a showcase space? And if you want it to be a showcase space, that's one thing. That's right. great. I'll help you all day long create that. But if that's not within your budget, let's find a space that can be. For example, mine is in my closet. We have a deep crawl space underneath it. And my husband cut a hole in the floor and put a vent over the top. So that way the cold air from the crawl space keeps my wine cool. It's not perfect. And I think a wine connoisseur would come in and go, well, you're not at 55 degrees, but it's definitely not at 80, you know, right, it's definitely, right. my red wines are always the right temperature. My white wines still need to go in the fridge for a little while. I think that's the case with most things though. I, mean, I have a single zone wine fridge and there's just some whites that need to be cold, like Chablis or champagne. Right. So there, that's what you have a refrigerator that. for. You bring right. them in, yeah. you prep for them. It's, yeah. it's 10 minutes in the fridge or 20 minutes in the fridge or an ice bath will do it too. So it doesn't have to be perfect. But this is the question that I have about this. You're looking at your space. What if you don't have any place to put it? What do you do? Do you do offsite storage? Well, I don't even know. Offsite storage is a smart way to do it, but then it's a hassle of having to go get your wine, right? Yep. And you have to plan for it. It's like, oh, we have to drive over and go get it. And that's that's a whole nother thing. In fact, I have friends who have 200 bottle wine storage and they still keep everything in their home. They found a space in their basement and they insulated it and they put in a cooling system in there, which definitely is expensive. Those kind of rooms can be 150 to five. There's no top end. I mean, oh, I think, yeah, no, there's no top yeah, end. Right? There's no top yeah. end. You could spend 500,000, a million dollars. Actually, I don't do those. I actually sell wine refrigerators. Let's talk about the refrigerators. I really want to talk about that. This is the number one question I get. I am ready to invest in a fridge. What do I look for? What options are available? And then where do you buy it? Do you buy it from Amazon? Do you go to an appliance store? What are the considerations? And then the last one is, 
what's the budget that will get me a decent fridge? Because people feel like there's a minimum. Like if they go to Costco, that's not good enough. I don't even know. It's all very dicey because these days, it's sort of like with furniture. You could buy a Pottery Barn couch or you could buy an Ikea couch and probably the Ikea couch is going to outlast the Pottery Barn couch, even though you've spent $25 million But, and, but the Pottery Barn couch sofa is still not even high quality. I mean, that's a whole other thing. I'm talking about that world of wine refrigerator exactly. also, right? So yeah, it's like- right. In order to get that level that's so much better than the Costco refrigerator, you have to go, you got to go Eurocave, you know? You yes and no. I've been doing a lot of research on this. So let me preface this with, I am a wine storage snob. I love Sub-Zero wine refrigerators. You're talking $3,500 to $10,000, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what the majority of my clients put in. But I've been doing a lot of research for this on lower end wine refrigerators. And there are a lot of things you have to pay attention to. First of all, the low-end wine refrigerators, and we're talking $500, $700. Yep. They're fine, but you cannot build them in. So don't expect to have them built into your kitchen. Many of these have to be freestanding. You can't build them in. So they're just going to be this refrigerator sitting on the floor in your kitchen. If that <laughs> look is fine with you, good for you. I would actually buy one and put one in my closet. But you also have to look at which way do they hinge? Many of these are not reversible. They're only hinged on the right-hand side. You don't get that option. So that can become a problem. The temperature variation on some of these is up to five degrees, which is really bad for your wine. And I'm talking like Sub-Zero or Gagano or, you know, Thermador, the high-end refrigerators, one degree variation, mm -hmm. one degree. There's also noise the cooling system vibrates. Oh, they're so loud. I have one. It drives me nuts. It's loud. Exactly. So would you want that in your dining room? You know, would you no. want something loud like that? Some of these, the motor actually creates a vibration so that the unit actually vibrates. So you really have to do due diligence and look at the research on it. The higher end ones, and now I'm talking in the pro ranges, they're actually lined with concrete to wow. actually minimize vibration. They are also within one degree temperature change. They also have dual evaporators, so they keep the moisture content consistent. Their glass is a higher rating of UV protection. Huge. Yeah, Hugely light important. damages our wine, right? Yes. They also have security. So um, I know the higher end ones, they will actually send you an alert if the temperature varies. So like if the um, power goes out, It'll tell you, power is out to your wine. You better get home and put this on ice. Right. Right. And then how many temperature controls do you need? The higher end wine refrigerators go up to three distinctive temperatures, whereas some of these smaller ones, you can find dual zone. But is that important to you? And this is honestly where you really need to see, is this important to you? Do I want my wine on display? Do I want it built into my kitchen, into my dining room, into my bar? Is this important to me? Or is it okay to get something that is in my budget? It's $500 and it's going to vary a little bit, but you know, my wine's in the $50 range. So if I lose a bottle on occasion, eh. So that's really up to you. And I, and nobody else can make that decision for you. Right. So it's really due diligence. It's really looking at the research and really looking at the specs and finding out how noisy it is. They're required by law to list the decibel ratings and what is that? Is that as loud as a vacuum cleaner is? You have to pay attention to those things. And I can't make that decision for you. You're the one who has to do that. So I do want to ask about the lower end refrigerators and where you would find research on those. The higher end ones, I would say there's not a whole lot of difference whether you get Viking or Sub-Zero or any of those. They have differing features, but they're all very, very high end. I have a small Viking. Actually, they just cut out a space underneath the countertop and put a plug in. So mine does lie on the floor and it is a freestanding unit, but it's a mini. It holds right, 50 bottles. Right. And that's where well, I put my nicest wines because it's one zone. And actually, what I've always said about wine refrigerators, and I don't know if you agree with this, is that the less technology they have, the more reliable they are. So the problem with wine refrigerators is also if they do break, finding someone to fix them is very difficult because not every appliance person Right. knows how to fix a wine refrigerator. The compressors are different. So you really do need to find something reliable. Right. So where would you recommend looking for research that would let you know 
You know, I went online, I just researched the top wine refrigerators 2024 and wine enthusiasts yeah. and, you know, all of these in the sommelier group, I never know how to pronounce that word. Um, you they have good. the listing and they're all the same. It's like the same ones keep coming up. Amazon has them available for $500. They're not bad. And I don't want to put any of them down, but it really depends upon, I would buy one of those $500 wine refrigerators and put it in my closet. No problem. And I would buy one that is a single temperature and I'd put that, my wine in there and that's where it would stay. It'd be in my closet. I don't care if it's a little noisy. I don't care that it's not pretty, that it's not built in. I don't care. I would never have one of those sitting out in the open because I'm not going to display it. But when I get the opportunity to put one in my house, I want it to match my cabinets. I want it to be built in. Now I'm looking at the higher end appliances because right. I want it to be pretty. And you know what? Frankly, I want to show off my wine. So that's a custom solution. And then there is the ready to wear off the shelf, right? Absolutely. There's the, the couture. But in terms of functionality, especially if you are drinking everyday wine. So I have three wine refrigerators, of course, because of what I do. And mine are not pretty. I've got the Viking for the collectible wines that I have. I have a Vino Temp Dual Zone, which holds about 200 bottles. And then I have another one, which is just one I got off Amazon. And it's nice, but it's single zone and it's for my everyday wines. So oh, sure. that's been my solution. However, those freestanding refrigerators are in my office because it is part of exactly. part of my work. So I understand what you're saying in terms of just having a random wine refrigerator. And I think you definitely have to think about aesthetics, but not just that functionality and make sure that you do due diligence and Absolutely. go within your budget. But I think the other thing about the wine refrigerators, space goes real quick in those. Oh, yeah. You will be shocked at how little space you have. They're all designed for Bordeaux bottles. So in the lower end ones, they're only designed for Bordeaux bottles. So when you see something... Champagne, so when it says it's burgundy, exactly. magnums, forget it. Oh, yeah. Because when it says the numbers that it gives you is specifically for Bordeaux. So you're never going to have what they say unless you're only putting a Bordeaux bottle in there. And I don't think everybody understands that. No, and not right? only that, you also do have to check shelf height because yep. I have some burgundies that I have pulled the label off when I pull it out. I thought it yes. fit in there. You have to be really careful about that too. If you are mainly a burgundy drinker or you drink wines that come in burgundy bottles, you might be a Northern Rhone person, you must make sure that you buy something where people say this is specifically something that will fit burgundy bottles or Pinot bottles. Absolutely. Yeah. You did let's pay attention. Too, is yeah. Champagne is a huge problem for a lot of storage. We'll read about it if you go to Wine Berserkers or any of the chat boards where some of these real wine geeky people spend time. They will talk about this and it is a serious issue. So think about what you drank also and what you will be putting in that exactly. wine refrigerator because you may have to get something where people say specifically it's for Pinot. Now, the good thing is even at the low end, there are some brands that say specifically we accommodate Burgundy bottles. So that's Absolutely. good too. Yeah. The thing is, is that you just can't do this willy nilly. You really have to plan for it. You have to think about what refrigerator you're going to buy. Do your research, ask your friends, talk to people. And if, if the information is not there online, call the manufacturer or call the rep and say, I need to know, does it do this? Does it do that? The other thing to pay attention to is metal shelves are not as good as wood shelves. Wood shelves are going to store your wine with less vibration. Yeah. Right. And less noise. So those are things you want to pay attention to. And then realize that just putting a wine refrigerator in a closet isn't the only thing. You have to have electricity. <laughs> right. So you're going to have to hire an electrician or run an extension cord, which I don't recommend. I, I, no. Extension cords are not a good thing for long term opportunities. They're not safe. OK. And also plan for, if you, especially if you're doing like a wine closet, we have to put lighting in there. We have to be able to see. Nothing is worse than opening it up and then not be able to see everything. Let's talk about basement storage. So let's say that someone has an area in their basement. How do you clear the space? And are there any good tips for the gamut of storage solutions that you can put in a basement? I think it really depends on 
where you live. I mean, absolutely. I live in the South in North Carolina because of the flooding issues and because of the clay soils here. There's no basements here. So there are crawl spaces. There are no basements. You could put it in a crawl space, but then you'd have to go in there and then worry that there's like cockroaches and and other things. So yeah. And your cockroaches are huge. (laughs) Yeah. No, 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 no. This is not good. You don't want to be down there or, you know, mice or so. Nobody really wants to be crawling around in a crawl space. But if you have a a legit basement, you know, you and I are both originally from the Northeast. Every house has a basement. Right. And it's also cool enough so that you probably could do temperature control up there and be okay with it. Well, you have to pay attention to a few things like is your basement dry so you have to be able to control the humidity so don't just you have a basement and it's unfinished unfinished basements are almost unheard of anymore everybody's you know buying for that space but you need to finish it out and you have to do what's known as a moisture test moisture test is really easy everybody can do it themselves you take a ziploc bag and put it on the concrete put duct tape all the way around it leave it there for 48 hours if there's moisture stuck underneath the ziploc bag it's Yeah, moisture issues, right? Yeah. So we need to know what the moisture issue is. If there's a moisture issue, you need to make sure that you're insulating that room and you're putting up a vapor barrier, you're protecting the floor. You have to minimize that. So you have to actually build a space, meaning you have to frame it in, put up a moisture barrier, put up insulation. And then if the basement stays cool, then you don't really need to do anything with it. But if it varies in temperature, which We have to be realistic about this and understand that temperature variation happens. I mean, two years ago, Portland, Oregon had 116 degree temperature. I am sure that basements in Portland still got warm. I hope you are enjoying this amazing show with Robin and learning lots about the things that you should think about with wine storage. If you are thinking about getting more wine, where else should you get it except Wine Access? You'd go to wineaccess.com slash normal to join the Wine Access Wine for Normal People Wine Club. I just did a weekly question on wine clubs just because I was curious about how people feel about winery wine clubs because my hunch was that people are sort of not feeling great great about having so much wine from one place. And as it turns out, the patrons said their ideal club was the Wine Access Wine Club because you get a selection of different wines that you really can't get elsewhere, things that you might not try for yourself, but that are very, very high quality so that you can get some new favorites and explore without a lot of cost. It's $150. That's shipping included four times a year for six bottles. Each quarter, we have a theme. These wines are very, very high quality. We give you the best wines for the best prices as wine access always does tasting sheets come with the wine that give you lots of information about the winery and the wine itself sign up today wineaccess.com slash normal and hit the easy button by letting me pick out wines for you four times a year and you can fill that wine refrigeration system or the under staircase storage wine rack whatever you have you can fill it with the wines from Wine Access. If you're not ready to join the wine club, you can go to a page of my picks and I'd love it if you let them know you heard about them through me by going to wineaccess.com slash WFNP. If you join the wine club, you also get 10% off all the purchases that you make that are outside the wine club. Wineaccess.com slash normal. I mentioned, and of course I have to mention again because Robin is a patron, membership has its privileges. Robin's part of the set of people who is a very active member of the community and gets so much out of it. And I get so much out of learning from her too, as do you. So if you're interested in really finding a true community of people that get together online, sometimes in person, this is a great way to meet other wine lovers. Patreon.com slash wine for normal people. And another great way to do it is through the virtual wine classes that I teach almost every other Saturday. Register for classes at wineforormalpeople.com slash classes. Do it today. And now let's get back to the show. So again, how much are you willing to invest? Are you going to put in a cooling system? And a cooling system, just the unit alone, costs between $2,000 and $7,000. But that's just the unit. That's not counting the installation of it, the electrical, the plumbing, because these things put out moisture. You have to be able to drain this thing out. You know, now you're talking a huge remodeling project. If you're handy with a hammer and, and you understand this, you can do it yourself. But I can't. That's, that's, I can design this all day long. I can't build this all day long. I can't even build a, whatever. It's not a good thing. You don't want to see me with a hammer. (laughs) It's not pretty. (laughs) Um, So anyway, and if this is your jam and you want this, 
we can create this for you. And it can be beautiful and fabulous. If you care about your wine, which obviously everybody's listening to this cares about their wine, you have to think about it, right? And Mm -hmm. to be very honest with you, nowadays, I'm thinking wine refrigerators. That's what I'm looking at going, I can control the temperature. I can get my bottles stored. Realistically, how many bottles do you have? I always say this. I am a drinker. I'm not a collector. When you were talking about your wine and how you reproach it, I think a lot of people in this community are like that. We're not collectors. We have right. a handful of bottles. I probably have more like 20, maybe 30 bottles that I hold on to, but they're on a rotation schedule. I plan really far right. in advance and I buy so that I can drink good things a couple times a year. But that's my profession. So of course I have that. That's different than right. most people. But most of the other bottles that I have, and I have many other bottles are for drinking now. And I don't want to be saddled with wines that I'm holding. I don't want to collect. So what about for the people? Is there a hack or is there anything they can do if they don't have that $2,000, but they do have a space in their basement in New England or New Jersey or somewhere like that, where they're storing the bottles, they do have sufficient moisture. And it is really important. I can't impress upon people enough that if you do have racks in your basement, please please invest in a thermometer and some sort of device that will tell you what the humidity is. If it's too dry, your wine is really at risk. You've got to make sure there's enough humidity to make sure that the corks stay supple. That is hugely important. Now, the other thing, so what does somebody do? They've got a bunch of bottles down in the basement and there is a five degree temperature swing, but they're comfortable with that. Is there anything else that they should do besides maybe switch to wooden racks? Because honestly, a basement also experiences vibration, road Mm -hmm. vibration and things like that. I would say really invest in a wine refrigerator. If you're going to do a racking system in your house, make sure you're buying a quality racking system. The better quality one, you mount it against the wall. So that way it's not just freestanding. That's going to help to minimize some of the vibration and keep the light at a minimum, put in LED lighting, get rid of the incandescent light bulbs. And again, check the humidity and check the temperature. Because my attitude is buying these $5,000 refrigerators. (laughs) And now that doing all this research, I'm realizing there's a $499 wine refrigerator that you can buy. And let me pull it up because I've done enough research on this. And this is the one that I'm looking at. Yes. Yeah. It has all these rankings that are really nice. It's the wine enthusiast 32 bottle. I'm going to send you the link for it. Yeah. We'll post it it up. Absolutely. $499 and it stores 32 bottles of wine and doing enough research on it. That's probably what I would purchase. I told my husband, I said, I could get a wine refrigerator. Right? So <laughs> so let me ask you this. Let's take it back because, again, we're both from the Northeast originally, and there's lots of urban folks listening to this. So you're in New York or Boston where we know that apartments are small. They're smaller than probably almost any other part of the country. London apartments tend not to be that big. There's not a whole lot of space. What do you do? Let's say you don't even have room for a fridge. Can you get creative? Is there a closet? What can you do? Do you do it under the bed? Are there any great solutions or have you seen anything in a small apartment that you could do if you're a wine lover? Well, in a small, if you had a small apartment and you can't get rid of all your storage, I would definitely then look at a wine refrigerator. If you had a really small space, why wouldn't you do that? But other than that, I mean, you're going to go take a small closet space, but in a small apartment, you you can't give up storage. And then the temperature control is an issue. Actually, my advice in a small apartment is store it in the refrigerator. Yes. I would much rather you have your wine too cold and at least have a little moisture in the refrigerator than have the radiator in a New York or Boston apartment cooking that wine. Because if you store it under your bed, any of us who have lived in these Northeastern cities, especially know you don't have control over the heat. So it kicks on and you have to wind up opening. I just remember my grandparents with being like the radiator. It's so hot. We're opening (laughs) windows in the middle of winter time because of the way that these apartments work. But realize if you're buying wine in a, you know, and you're putting it in your regular refrigerator where you can keep all your condiments. I'm a well, condiment queen, right? So right. I would that have That may no be true, room. but if you're a real New Yorker, you're ordering out every night, so it doesn't exactly. matter. <laughs> or you're buying to cook whatever you're cooking just that night. You don't exactly. have a stocked fridge. So and maybe you can that could buy, work. You can buy really cute 
wine storage units to go inside your refrigerator to store three or four bottles. Oh, that's cool. Here's, I didn't know that. Yeah. And the other thing that I would never do clients, there was a trend for a long time of putting wine storage in a kitchen, you know, like bottles. Oh God. Oh my Don't God. Don't get me started. Do not oh my God. get me Especially, started on that next, you to can the, always, next to the stove. Just kill me right now. No. Or wait, 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 above refrigerators. That's oh, where, where it's it used so to be hot. Stored. So smart. I always tell clients, if you want to put wine on display, you only put wine on display that you drink in a week. Even that's all. Then, if you drink it in a week, you can do it. But other than that, uh, not at all. Bad I idea. I will tell you, even then, when you are cooking and that heat is coming up or the refrigerator heat is coming up, it is not a good idea to store your wine anywhere near a heat source. I don't care oh, no, if that no. heat source is a window. Right. I don't care if it's a refrigerator. I don't care if it's a stove. I don't care if it's an oven, a radiator, anything. It is really, really important. And again, always err on the side of cold rather than warm. Right. A lot of people in their home, even in small, you know, thinking about small, small, small spaces. I have a, a major aversion to linen closets um, because mm -hmm. usually linen closets are so stuffed that you have to like put a hand up when you open the door because everything's going to come out. And people have so much stuff in there that they never use. Linen closets are like the bane of my existence. But you could take the bottom part of a linen closet and, you know, you don't have to be fancy. Just get a wooden box and stack your wine up in there. You're not storing 50 bottles, but you can easily store a case of wine there. And again, that level of wine, if you're drinking it on a regular basis then you're going to go through it quick enough that it's not going to get damaged and you're going to be okay with it. It's a great place because it's super dark. Nobody's going in there. It's protected. Yeah, nobody goes in the linen yes. closet. I yeah. love that idea, especially versus a closed closet where the light is going on constantly on and Absolutely. off. Absolutely. Think about your budget. Think about how much your wine you're storing today and how much you want to store into the future. And Temperature control is the most important thing that is more important than anything else is controlling your wine. If you didn't buy wine for a little while, you could probably afford to purchase a $499 wine refrigerator. It's something that is worth investing in. I think that the problem for a lot of people is that they don't know what to get. And now we are giving them a suggestion or they feel like, well, I don't drink that much. I don't know if I drink enough for, to have that be something. I Well, you know yeah. what? If you are drinking on a regular basis, you probably should invest in some sort of storage or cooling system. And I really like the idea of a refrigerator. But I also think, again, there are lots of crafty ways to exactly. think and consider storage. But there are many out of the way places, but the key here always is thinking about, is there enough humidity? And that's what I worry about in the linen closet. Is there mm -hmm. enough humidity and is there protection from heat and light? And absolutely, of course, vi vibration is a little bit less of an issue in terms of destroying the wine. It's going to take a lot more vibration to destroy the wine than heat and light, which light strike can kill a wine right away. You know what I mean? Right. Especially if you have anything in a clear bottle. So that's the other thing too, like spaces underneath closets, underneath stairs, stairs are so difficult. It's a really great way to create wine storage and you have depth and you could put doors on them. You could just have two doors on it. Unfortunately, you're kind of crawling underneath there a little, but you know, <laughs> well, you can do that. It's a really good space. I think space under stairs is a really good opportunity. And especially if you have access to the crawl space below it, like we did putting a hole in the floor, we did put a cover over it. So things aren't just going down like the cats. <laughs> <laughs> but it does keep it cool underneath. That's a good use of space. Closets that you don't use, don't put it in your garage. Bad oh, idea. Oh, gosh, no. No, no, <laughs> really no. Really bad idea. Um, Not even a wine refrigerator because if for some reason the fridge breaks, and I know a lot of people prefer to have that, but if the fridge stops operating and you don't notice, your wine is done if it's the summertime. It's the wintertime. Well, and also okay. you have to be aware is that many refrigerators or freezers are not warranted to be in unconditioned spaces. So if it's ah. an unconditioned space like that, if it fails, you have no warranty on it. So that's something to be aware of. I think that any no-nos in a house, I mean, things that we've talked about really are just this display thing, which I think is hugely important. Just make sure that you're, if you're going to display it, you're going to drink it quickly. Keeping uh -huh. it away from heat and light are really important. And look at what you've got and make the most of it, but simultaneously 
This idea of I'm right on the same page with you in terms of wine fridges. Of obviously, I don't design these spaces, but there are plenty of wine refrigerators for people who want to spend a lot of money too. They Absolutely. do the work for you. They do yeah. the work for you. And if you do have a good basement, it depends on the part of the country that you live in. And I don't mean just the United States. I mean any country. If you are in a hot area, you're not going to be able to do the same kind of storage solutions that you are if you live in a cooler area. It's just bottom Absolutely. line. Absolutely. You're dealing with a product that is sensitive. There's so much good wine to drink that you can drink, like you could buy it and drink it. That is it important to have 500 bottles of wine on storage? I mean, that's a lot of investment and things go bad. You know, I have a great story that um, years ago, I went and met with this guy who wanted to create a 10,000 bottle wine storage room. I need you to tell us some of these stories. Yes. This thing blew my mind, but he also was into cigars. So he wanted a room that was so he could smoke cigars in 10,000 bottles. And when I asked him, Are, how much wine do you have now? And he says, well, I just want to start collecting. I said, well, have you done the math? If you just had $10 bottle wines, you're $100,000 just in wine. That's, you know, disposable wine, right? So we kind of stepped back. It was more important that he had a place to smoke cigars, which yeah. smoking cigars is a, just a different thing. We need a high quality ventilation system because, man, you don't want that smell everywhere. And he wanted to have windows in this space, which is not good for wine. So what we ended up doing, so I ended up quoting him a price and these numbers are pre, so I'm going to kind of do them in my head because it was pre 2000. So it was like in the 1990s. I would say today he probably, for that room, he would have spent four or $500,000, oh which just blows my mind. I mean, obviously he had the money. We ended up buying three sub-zero tall refrigerators, which gave him 384 bottle of wine storage with a total of nine different temperatures. Wow. Because each one had three temperature controls. Right, right. So he had nine temperature controls, just under 400 bottles. It was probably a hundred thousand dollars. So we were able to do that and then give him a really beautiful room that he could smoke cigars in and he could have nicer space. So we ended up saving money by doing right. this instead of being obscene. Most people, when I'm doing wine refrigeration storage, it is in the kitchen and I am doing the sub-zero refrigerators. And I, I keep talking about that product, but the reason why I like that product and I don't work for the company is it's made here in America and it's a family owned company. And that's why I recommend these products. They haven't had clients not happy with them. And some of these refrigerators are going on 30 years and they're still going, right? It's amazing. Which is fabulous. You invest, it lasts longer. Anyway, most wine storage I'm doing, in fact, pretty much all of it is in kitchen spaces or in bars or in dining rooms. I'll send you some pictures to post Great. if you want to in the notes, but they're like, they're built into cabinetry. And that's mostly what I'm doing. I'm not doing wine rooms because once we start talking about their budget and how much wine they store, and do you want this on display? We're just integrating them into the kitchen. Right. Between you and I, those basement cellars with the faux finish of the Tuscan skyline. And, and they're you know, enormous, all that. right? They're just enormous. And then they've and got the glass and the security tables for people to sit down and try wine. And it's so cold because if it is done properly, yep. that needs to be at 55. And yeah, nobody wants to sit in a freaking no. 55 degree cellar and drink wine. No one wants no, to do we're that. We're going to get that fun. bottle of wine. And we're going to go sit out on the deck or sit in the yard or sit in front of the fire. And depending upon the time of year, we're going to enjoy it. When you're going on a tour and you're drinking wine and you're doing wine tasting, that's it. But if you're coming to my house, we're eating food and we're talking and it's it's not sitting in a cold space drinking wine. Even if the entire purpose is to try a special bottle of wine, you don't want to enjoy that special <laughs> bottle of wine in a terrible environment. When you go to vineyards, you sit outside and you taste yeah. wine, right? You're looking at the beautiful scenery. Wine is sensitive. It's emotional and it's hanging out with people. I mean, community. 
it comes in big bottles for us to share. And this is why I continue to tell my friends in the industry that a huge missed opportunity as everybody's bashing on wine and alcohol is to understand that it is part of mental health also. And I think Absolutely. everybody that listens to this understands that there are ways to get and commune with people over a bottle of wine that Absolutely. no other product has. Wine is a whole experience. Exactly. Moment, right? And food is always included. You have to it have food. Be. <laughs> it's what you do. It's food and wine, right? So I do want to just address, because some people in the audience do have these incredibly large wine rooms. And I do think it is important for people to reflect exactly what you're saying. If they have them now or they're planning on making them, what is the purpose and how are you going to get through all of those bottles if they're not for investment? A lot of people want to do resale. They will buy bottles that they don't intend to drink, but- just think about if you have a thousand bottles or 2,500 bottles, what is your drinking plan for that? Because Absolutely. as you're thinking about storage, you need to think realistically. We talked about the smaller end of things, which I think is completely manageable for all of us. I don't think there's any way that anyone in this audience who has a decent social life and, you know, who drinks on a regular basis, you get through 500 bottles in a couple of years. It's not a big deal. But the bigger problem is if you decide that you want one of these enormous sellers and you decide to be a collector, what are you going to do with the wine? Because Absolutely. having a plan for that wine is essential. Will you have a party Will you'll go through 100 bottles a couple times a year? Will you save it and resell it when it's ready? What are you going to do with it? Well, and if you're buying that much wine, you really have to put in a good wine refrigeration unit, meaning a cooling unit for that room. You have to have moisture control, humidity control. You have to make sure you're really planning. This is a process. If you're designing one of those rooms, it is a huge investment. And realistically, these numbers are easily 200 to 500, $600,000. I cannot even give you a number, anything less than that. It's like remodeling a kitchen. Because yeah. you have so much infrastructure you have to put in, electrical, plumbing, insulation, moisture barriers. I don't know if you've priced out quality wine racking systems. Oh, they're incredibly expensive. Oh they blow God. your mind because they craft them by hand. The stuff they do, is all, and they're, yeah, they're made custom. out of mahogany and walnut, and they're gorgeous. If you're going to do that, you have to really plan for it. And if you're buying wine to sell, you seriously have to think about that because now you need an alarm system on this because you're buying quality wine. That's different than what I'm buying. If you're investing in that level for resale, then I would actually take it to an offsite wine storage space right. because they're going to have the insurance policy on 100%. it. You now have to insure your wine. Some people who have those like show it off. They want to oh, show absolutely. that they have that many bottles also. Right? We are wine for normal people. We are not wine for... <laughs> Although wine for normal people it has no budget. I've always said that, right. you know, it's about how we communicate about wine in a not snotty way. Simultaneously, I think some of it also has to do with how practical we are. I don't Absolutely. care how wealthy you are. I don't care if you're super wealthy, you're a billionaire and you're listening to this or you have no money and you like wine and you love wine. Yeah. It makes zero difference to me. The point is, regardless of where you are, be realistic about what you have. Absolutely. And these wine rooms to me, and I think to you too, for most of us are, yes, they're beautiful. If you have more money than you know what to do with, you could build one. You still have to be practical. You might find that you have a better use for the storage than a 2,500 bottle or 5,000 bottle seller, which is rare. It's really only in the top of the top of the top homes. But I can just tell you that I know people who have those kinds of collections and it winds mm -hmm. up becoming an albatross eventually. Absolutely. I recently worked for a client who collected, she had an amazing wine collection and unfortunately, she died of the flu. It was pre-COVID and she died of the flu. It's horrible. But when she passed, we had a huge party, huge party, and we drank all her wine. I mean, you cannot take it with you. Right. Right. That's you right. can't take it with you. Be practical. I mean, if you're going to do wine storage, talk to somebody and really do deep thought of realistically how much wine you're going to store, how much wine you're going to store for long term, and how much wine you're going to have for today. And think about long-term. I mean, my long-term wine storage is like five, six years. I don't have really long wine. I'm not buying that quality of wine that you can store for that long. 
do the research and then be honest with your budget. Because the reality is no matter what your budget is for your wine storage, it can be met. It's just, where is it going to go? I really want you to dig deep and really think about how much money you want to invest. That's got to be where you start Mm -hmm. is how much do you want to invest, how much wine you want to keep today and how much wine you want to keep in the future. That's the best way to start. And a good designer can help you to solve your problem. They're really is an opportunity for everybody. What a great note to end on. That's such a fantastic summary of what we're talking about. Robin, thank you so much. Would you like to give your website if anybody would like to consult with you? Yes, um, it's actually my full name, but there's a shorter version. So it's either robinrigbyfisher.com, which we'll have to put it in the show notes because it's really long, or rrf at design.net. There you go. Especially if you are in the Pacific Northwest, Robin is there and she has a thriving business. She might be able to fit you in. If not, we can do virtual. She can do virtual for you. And she is a super practical person and a great resource. Robin, thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And with that, this has been another episode of Wine for Normal People. Thank you so much for listening and we will catch you next time. 